Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show right here with the Digital Airways of YouTube. Listen, there are very few things that piss me off, contrary to what you would normally believe. I don't get pissed off at much because most things don't matter that much. But I love the sport of boxing. And I got to tell you, I'm so disgusted. They're just rumors. But we understand that there are things that get attached to rumors, some level of legitimacy and substance. When I heard the rumors that Canelo Alvarez, Saul Canelo Alvarez, is talking about fighting the bigger Charlo this time, around, this time around, Jamal Charlo, the natural 168 pounder, okay? I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, this guy's had a fight once in the last two and a half to three years. He obviously had some personal issues. Why pick him? And then you're hearing that after that fight, oh, I'm going to fight. Terrence Crawford, who, by the way, started out his career lightweight, junior welterweight, went up from 140 to 147, is now the welterweight champion of the world at 147. That's 21 pounds lighter. That's three weight divisions lighter than Canelo Alvarez. I'm like, what about David Benavidez, the natural super middleweight, who's 28 and 0 with 24 knockouts, who's been begging for Canelo to get into the ring with him? It really, really ticks me off. But rather than get on my own soliloquy or my own diatribe going off about everything, I decided to bring in the experts, okay? Because I wanted to talk to a colleague of mine, formerly at ESPN, where he worked with me at ESPN for 15 years, okay, before departing in 2020, all right? This guy right here, a boxing analyst extraordinaire, a boxing writer extraordinaire, the one and only Dan Rayfield. What's going on, big time? How are you, man? How's everything? Hey, Stephen A. It's great to talk to you. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate the intro. First of all, let's get right to it. When you heard the news that this is a potential fight, this is a likely fight coming down the pike with Canelo versus the bigger Charlo, Jamal Charlo, your thoughts? Well, I was not surprised, but I'd be honest, I was a bit disappointed. And by the way, this is not something that just has come up in recent days. If you go back to the period of time pr just prior to the signing of the fight between Canelo and Jermel Charlo, who is his younger brother, twin brother, who was at that time the undisputed junior middleweight champion of the world at 154 pounds, who was going to move up two weight classes if he, when he fought Canelo. Originally, it was supposed to be Canelo against the big Charlo, who's the one of the champions at 160 pounds. So the fight between Canelo and Jermall was already in play prior to when he fought the brother. But the brother, the 160 pounder, was not able to get to the fight because he was having his own issues outside the ring. He was dealing with some mental health problems and those sorts of things. And so therefore, it was sort of like they did the switcheroo. Instead of going with the, the 160 pound Charlo, they went with the 154 pound Charlo. That is who Canelo fought in the last fight lost basically every single round. And now here you have Canelo preparing for uh, what will be a fight on May 4th, the Cinco de Mayo holiday, and they did an opponent. And so apparently uh, the the bigger Charlo, Jamal, who would also be moving up a weight class instead of two weight classes like his, right. his brother did, uh, he's back in the mix. Now, as I have described it, those are the rumors. But the fight is not signed. It is not done. It has not been publicly announced. As I have described it, he is the leader in the clubhouse in a, in a group of fighters that would be probably a lot more appealing. When is Canelo going to get criticized for all of this? And I'm not trying to imply that nobody has thrown any criticism his way, Dan. But here's my problem with this. You fought Bavall, you lost. You've got two draws on your resume along with two losses. So as Teddy Atlas, the great Teddy Atlas once said, recently said, by the way, he could easily be deemed as being 60 and 4. I'm not even sweating that. My issue, Dan, is... You fought to do two weight classes lower than you in a smaller Charlo, Jamel Charlo. Now you're talking about Jamal Charlo, who would also have to move up, correcting me from earlier, because I talked about him being at 168, when in fact he's at 160. I'm just saying, David Benavidez is at 168, the reigning, um, this dude is 28 and 0 with 24 knockouts. How has Canelo gotten away with avoiding him this damn long? Well, as far as the, the, the who he's going to fight and not being criticized, I think some people, they do. And I'm, in, I'm among this group, I admit this, that you give Canelo a little bit of slack because in the end he has fought all of the guys, maybe not at the exact moment that you or me would like to see them take place. But he has gone through and fought the top fighters. And I also will give him a lot of credit for having the stones to go up to 175 pounds to fight Bivol, who was an undefeated fighter, who was a great technical boxer, who was at worst the number two guy in that weight class who's about to fight in June for the undisputed But not a knockout Hunter artist. Yeah. But not a knockout artist. I'd get your point and would completely side with you, Dan, if 
You were talking about Better Biev, but Better Biev is the monster in the light heavyweight division. He's undefeated. He's the knockout artist. He's the one that pummels opponents. It's not like Canelo fought him, but I understand you avoiding him because you're not a natural light heavyweight. So why fight a natural light heavyweight who will punish you to death? So you're fighting Bavall, that's fine to move up to fight a technical fighter that isn't necessarily a knockout artist, even though you ultimately lost to him by decision. But at the super middleweight division, you've got David Benavidez there. This is a weight that Canelo has maturated too naturally, I might add. And I'm just saying, fighting smaller guys really is the problem for me when you're a power puncher and a mauler the way that Canelo Alvarez is known to be. Yeah, I, listen, I can't disagree with that, but I, I just say, because of what he's done, he does get a little bit of slack, and he is the champion. He did go through that weight class, and he won all the belts. And I think at this point, he's gotten – he fought the Bivol fight, as you mentioned. He's come back since then, and he has won. And now people are going to get a little bit antsy, a little frustrated, because they do want to see him against some of the top guys in his own weight class. So while it's okay if you talk, talk about – I wouldn't even give him problems if he – fought Crawford because at least you and I know that boxing is a business that will generate enormous amounts of interest right. in the mainstream and money. So I don't even have a problem with that. It's when you fight, if it happens, and let's keep it real, that it's not done yet. So I don't want to say sure. it's 100%. If he does go forward and fight against uh, Jamal Charlo in the May fight, it is because it's uh, a move that maybe it's because uh, Al Heyman and the folks at PBC had promised Charlo the fight before he made it. Uh, an, an inability to get to the ring and they gave it to the brother. But the biggest problem is it would be done over a group of other more deserving guys to challenge for the title. Benavides is clearly at the top of the list. I have shouted from the rooftops in uh, in my writings and in my, in my fight freaks unite Substack newsletter that this guy, if you say that Canelo is the undisputed champ, which he is with all the belts, then David Benavides without question is the undisputed mandatory, the undisputed people's number one contender, the guy who is by far and away, the most deserving of the opportunity. And if you if you stipulate to the fact that, well, he's not going to fight him yet, maybe he'll fight him in September, so they're going to need another opponent for the May fight, well, fine, then you go and take a look at Jaime Munguia, for example, who is now still undefeated after a big win the other night, where now he's 43-0, and 0, and a fellow Mexican, which would make a lot of sense on the Cinco de Mayo uh, holiday. There are other fighters in the weight class, David Morell, an undefeated uh, title holder, Big time who, technically speaking, is his mandatory challenger in the WBA. There's other good quality opponents for him to fight at 168 pounds. Terrence Crawford, you brought up that name and you said you wouldn't have a problem with it, neither would I to some degree because it makes sense from a box office perspective. What I would have a problem with is this is a guy that just fought at 147. And you're talking about him fighting. It, 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 I guess a 168-pound champion. Now, if he was willing to move up and Canelo was at least willing to move down on a catch weight of, say, 160 to 158, I'm all for that. But we know that's not what Canelo's talking about. So why, would she, why should we support him against a guy in Terrence Crawford who is superb, arguably the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter on the planet, but also an individual that walks around fighting 21 pounds and three weight divisions lighter than Canelo no, Alvarez? Listen, I understand that. And just, just to be clear, it's Canelo is not the one that's been out there shouting about wanting to fight Terrence Crawford. As a matter of fact, if you look at any of his public statements that he has made to any number of media outlets, uh, he has never said that he was interested in fighting Crawford. That's come more from other people and speculation. And of course, the fact that Crawford is now aligned also with PBC. And it seems as though the rematch with Errol Spence is not going to take place for a variety of reasons, including the fact that Errol is on the sidelines after having recent cataract surgery. So Crawford's in need of an opponent. But it's not been Canelo or anybody on his team that is out there saying, I want Crawford. So I think that's more of a, of a, of a social media and a, and a rumor sort of situation. Uh, I'm just making the point that if he did offer that, from a commercial point of view, I get it because it's boxing. But in the spot for May... You have a plethora of available and quality guys who are legit, active 168 pounders who are in Charlotte, who, by the way, even in his last fight, when he came back after the two plus year layoff, right. he fought a welterweight in Jose Benavides. That's David's older brother. Right. And he won that fight. And he, he, he failed to make the weight for that fight. They contracted it at 164. He came in at 166. He won the fight fine, but he didn't look exactly uh, terrific in that fight. So he, and again, I have, I'm not knocking Charlo or his brother. I've got no beef with either one of those guys, but from an athletic point of view, he's not done one darn thing to earn a shot at the super middleweight champion of the world. Having said all of that, 
What are we to make of Benavidez being avoided in the future? We look at it now and we're like, okay, fine, it's tolerable, but it's getting intolerable, to be quite honest with you. How many more fights are we going to sit idly by and let Canelo have with others that are not named David Benavidez before there's a collective uproar, not just the Dan Rayfields and Stephen A. Smiths of the world going off about it? Well, that's a good question because Canelo, when he signed with PBC, it was for three fights. The first fight took place in his last bout. That was the uh, Jermel Charlo fight. The second fight will be the fight that comes up in May. Theoretically, that might be the Jermel Charlo fight. Then right. you're looking at fight number three of that three-fight contract, which would be the final fight in September, which, as we mentioned, might be a Terrence Crawford. Hopefully, it's David Benavides. One thing I have learned, Stephen A., is that in boxing, when you do contracts, the biggest fight usually happens in the last fight of the deal. And the, the, the uh, David Benavides fight, by far and away, is the biggest fight that they can make in terms of competition in his own weight class, Crawford notwithstanding, well, in terms of being a smaller guy. Hopefully it's the September fight, because we know it's not the May fight. Will Al Heyman and BBC make, PBC be able to make the Benavides fight if, Benavides, if it was Benavides and Canelo? Because I don't recall whether or not Benavides is under the umbrella. Yes, he is with, with PBC. Okay. And he and his team, Samson Lukowitz, they want that fight. They say it all the time. I have zero, zero, zero question in my mind whatsoever. They could make that fight in five seconds if offered. Uh, they know the market rate. They're not going to look to blow it up because they're going to scrap for every single penny or dime on the table. They'll make that fight if offered in two seconds. And keep in mind, by the way, David Benavides is the WBC's interim champion. Yes. And at some point, they will make him the mandatory. So if the WBC wants to at least help make the fight, it's not a guarantee because Canelo is going to do what Canelo wants to do. But they can help at least put it in play and force it to some degree mm -hmm. by making that the mandatory and ordering the negotiation and put some pressure on Canelo to do that. But they have not really shown an, an aptitude or a desire or a willingness mm -hmm. or an appetite to do that.